Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Recently, like over the last two weeks, I've been doing a lot of reading and not a lot of vlogging. So I thought I would sit down, have a little chat about the books that I've been reading. So without any further ado, I hate when people say that. <laughs> Let's get into the books that I've been reading. I'm gonna start with a quick little recap of what I read in the first two weeks of June. I did do some vlogs for this, so I will link them up above. I started out the month by reading the graphic novel Snot Girl, the third volume, um, and I gave that four stars. I then listened to the audiobook of You Should See Me in a Crown, which I gave three stars. I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley for school, I ended up giving that one four stars. And then I also read The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which I did not enjoy all that much and I gave that one two stars. Also in those vlogs, I started reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, and I didn't finish it until after I wrapped up those vlogs. Overall, I gave this one four and a half stars out of five. I actually really enjoyed it. I mean, I was expecting a really cute rom-com, very much like Red, White, and Royal Blue. I can't believe I said that the first try. <laughs> I usually stumble over that, so I'm quite shocked. I was expecting a really cute rom-com, and that's exactly what I got. I have a lot of tabs in here. Um, there were lots of cute moments, lots of funny characters. This is a cute sapphic romance, little rom-com moment about August, a girl who is in her mid-twenties trying to figure her life out, who moves to New York and meets this girl Jane on the train, and then they fall in love. <laughs> One thing I didn't quite like is that Casey made us wait like 250 pages for the first smut scene, and like I get it, Jane lives on the train, but <sighs> compared to Red, White, and Royal Blue, when I think the first smut scene is like within the first 150 pages. Casey, why did you make me wait another 100 pages in this book? But yes, this is a super cute sapphic rom-com and I highly recommend it. I think it very much deserves all the hype it has been getting. Next up, I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This was not at all what I was expecting. I think everyone is familiar with the um, adaptations of this novel, but if you aren't familiar, this story follows a little girl named Alice who falls down a rabbit hole and enters an alternate reality where everything is strange. Yeah, I was expecting this to be much more like the movies, but this was not like that. Um, Tweedledee and Tweedledum do not exist in this, and I was disappointed a little bit. But it was still a cute and quirky story, so I gave it three stars. Also, this edition is absolutely stunning. Um, yes. It was a joy to read from. <laughs> I also listened to the audiobook The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, we all know what I came for, but I was still a little bit disappointed. I gave this two stars. The books in this series have just gotten like worse and worse. This one was much more plot driven than the other two. I, I find it kind of hard to talk about books in a series that isn't the first book without like giving too much away. Um, so I don't have too much to say about this other than yeah, I was there for the smut and it was not quite as smutty as the second one. Also, if you are familiar with the series, you'll know that the joining has kind of been teased in the second book and it's teased throughout the whole third book too. And I was disappointed that it just didn't happen. Like, Jennifer, why are you making me wait so long for that? <sighs> But anyways, I knew what I was signing up for when I started the book, and I just didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to, but it was still something that I wanted at the time. Uh, I've mentioned this 
before, but right now I'm like in the mood for high fantasy and this book is still a high fantasy. Um, so it was what I wanted. It just was not that good. <laughs> and the final book that I finished was The Res Sisters by Thompson Highway. This is actually a play uh, and I read it for school, so I'm not gonna talk about it in too much detail, but I did not really enjoy this. This is a play by a native playwright and it says it is a powerful and moving portrayal of seven women from a reserve attempting to beat the odds by winning at bingo and not just any bingo it's the biggest bingo in the world and a chance to win a way out of a tortured life the res sisters is hilarious shocking mystical and powerful and clearly establishes the creative voice of native theater and writing in canada today so i don't doubt that but I think a lot of the humor just kind of went over my head or I just didn't find it funny. I mean, I did find the first act much more funny than the rest of it, but I just kind of lost interest. I felt like most of the characters were really one dimensional and I would enjoy this much more as a play, I think. I am excited to have conversations about this in like a school setting, but on a personal level, this was not something I vibed with, so I gave it two stars. So those are the books that I finished in June. I am currently reading two books, but I talk about them in a reading vlog, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But before I go, I do have a mini book haul for you. I was on the phone with my friend and we're actually really bad influences for each other when it comes to shopping, so she convinced me to get these two books. Recently, we have been talking about Coraline by Neil Gaiman, and the way this book came to be is kind of shocking, actually. The images in here are terrifying. Let me just find one to show you. Like, um, hello, that is so scary for a children's book. Uh, what? I read online that um, Neil Gaiman's publisher was like, you can't publish this, this is too scary for a kid's book. And he was like, read it to your kids and see if they find it scary. And so they did and the kids were so scared that they didn't say anything. So the book got published and you know, that's how Coraline came to be. And so me and my friend are gonna buddy read this together. I am so excited. I love horror, like, mm. And I actually watched Coraline for the first time last year and loved it, you know? Yes, I'm so excited for this. And then I had to get another book to get free shipping. Obviously I went for getting another book and not just paying for shipping. So I got Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishiguro. Oof, I've heard so many good things about this. Like, yep. Yeah. So I know that this is about AI and friendship, I think. And yeah, I've heard really good things. I've heard that this is a nice, cute story. And um, it's been on my TBR for a while and it was on sale, so. I just got it. So those are the two books I got. I don't know when I'm gonna get to them, but I am so excited that I have them. <laughs> yes, we are building that book collection. We are building the library. So those are all the books that I have read recently. Some mediocre reads, and I'm kind of disappointed that I have allowed myself to read not the greatest books. I'm hoping that the books I read in July are going to be better. If you missed it, I do have a July TBR video up. I'll link it up above in the cards. I want to thank you for spending your time with me and watching this video. If you want to see more content from me, I make lots of journaling and bookish videos every Monday and or Thursday, so make sure you subscribe to not miss out on any of those. You can also follow me on my socials. I'll have them listed in the description. I hope you're having a good day or night wherever you are in time and space, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye-bye.